Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. Today's video is going to be all about using amazing cast in resin. And here's a very quick glimpse of the vignette before we get started. The first project is a hardback book that I used a rice paper from Decoupage Queen that I found off of Etsy. And then the resin part of it is going to be the hang tag that hangs from the lace bow. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about painting book stacks, if you've never done this before. Um, and if you're a book lover like I am, I apologize for painting it. Um, and But this is a book that I bought at an estate sale. Um, last summer, I, in my vendor booth, I sold a ton of book stacks. And so I ended up going to an estate sale to be able to get a lot of them and get them for really inexpensive. So this is just a book that I was only buying for the purposes of decorating it. And I put two good coats of Rust-Oleum white linen chalk paint on it. Now this next book is my favorite John Grisham book and it's actually something that I will keep. And I go ahead and start painting it and then I quickly remembered that well that was not a good idea because if you've ever painted over red or that dark burgundy, it just uses a lot of paint to try to cover it up. And you might not be able to see it, but you can see that it's already going to bleed through. And it's going to take a lot of coats of paint to cover it up. But I persevere, and then I change my mind. Um, and I go ahead, and I just take the hard cover off of it completely. I pull it off the spine. But it's okay. It's my book. Um, and so I'm okay with that because I'm going to keep it. And so what you can do is if you decide to do that, or even if you use a paperback book, is just find the very first page that doesn't have very many words on it. And you can use some chalk paint to cover it up. But I put a very light coat on it. And because this was a hardback book and the spine was on really good because it was a book that um, I haven't really had for a long time. So the glue had not deteriorated at all. Then when I pulled it off, the glue kind of still was on there and it was yellow and I didn't want that. So I went on and painted that. Now, the one thing that I will not paint is the very back up page of the book. Because if you're a John Grisham fan, you know that a lot of times at the very end of his books, he will throw in a little surprise and you're like, what? And you just thought, oh my goodness, do I need to go back and read the whole book so it makes sense again? Um, but that's what I like about him. And what's really cool, just this fun fact, is that he spoke at my son's college graduation because my son graduated from um, UNC Chapel Hill and John Grisham's wife was graduating at the same time. So he was the keynote speaker. It was so really neat for me because he's my favorite writer. Now, if you keep the hardback cover on it and it is not the same color as the front of it, you do need to go in and you need to paint a little bit of trim on the inside of it. Because if you're using it as a riser and you lay it to the side, people are going to see that inside part of the fabric. And on the spine, because remember it kind of will, um, not sure if I know what a good word is, but it's not going to fit real tight. You can use that paintbrush to tuck in and tuck it into the spine and paint just a little bit further back. Now on the spine of this, the hardback book that I put the rice paper on, I'm actually gonna use air dry clay for my mold and it's a IOD trimmings mold. And the reason I'm doing that is because the resin mold would be just a little bit too heavy for it. And because the spine, you know, when you open it up all the way, it tends to kind of wiggle a little bit and air dry clay works much better on it. So you notice that what I'm doing is I'm using that card to kind of cut off the extra um, clay at the very end. And then I just throw that little part away because it's just a little bit. And then I'm going to paint it and put some Dixie Belle Voodoo gel stain on it and then antique it and then I put some more on the rest of the book and you'll notice that I keep kind of going back and lightly touching that spine and pressing that mold down and then I'll just sit it up to dry 
and I will also put some Voodoo Gel Stain kind of all over the book, but just kind of lightly. But I want to make sure that every few minutes I kind of go back and push it down really gently to make sure that it stays because that spine is not very stiff and it's going to wiggle and I don't I want it to stay on. So on my John Grisham book, um, I have used the IOD Rose Toile stamp and this is such a gorgeous stamp. It has a really large design on it, but it also has some smaller designs and it has a lot of script that comes out really pretty. So I stamped it with Stays On Ink and then I'm using Distressing Ink and I'm going back with a dabber. And at first I kind of do the edges and then I do the spine and then I kind of go back all over the front of the book. But remember, I'm not touching the back of that book because I want to make sure that I get to read this book again. And I don't want to cover up any of the words. But with the Distressing Ink, you can still go pretty lightly on it and get the effect that you want. Because it's always better to do just a little bit than a whole bunch. And so this is a cameo mold that I'll be using as a tag. Now on this book, I've used that decoupage paper. And this is one of the IOD molds made out of resin. And it's on the cameo mold, but it's a clock. It's like a pocket watch. And so I've tied a lace bow around it and just used thin ribbon or lace um, ribbon to tie that on to have it to hang down. And one of the things with resin, you're going to want to punch a hole in it if you want to hang it later on. So you want to punch that hole in it very quickly after you get it out of the mold or it's going to get so hard that it's going to be hard to punch a hole in it. And because the laces are the same color, you can't really tell, but you can see that it hangs down. And this one will be more like a shelf sitter. And one of the things I did was I also stamped a little bit of script on it. And um, I kind of air dry brushed a little bit of white paint over it. So do you think I kind of went overboard on this one? I'm not sure. Now with this, this is a cameo mold that is, I made sure it's got a hole in it, and I put it on top of a doily, but then I realized it was too white, so I dyed that um, doily with coffee before I hung it. Now, my next project is a light switch again. I know I did that on my first video, and everybody just loved it. They just thought it was so cool, um, and so I wanted to do one for this because it uses resin. So this mold comes from Redesign with Prima, and it's called Small Leaves Garland. And so um, I've got the mold all set, and um, I have glued it on with tight bond glue, and I've just put little pieces around on the sides, and at the bottom I've actually found a little piece that I put right in the middle. And I'm using um, the Voodoo Gel Stain from Dixie Belle, and let me go back and just remind you that you will need to put some sort of sealer on it before you put that gel stain on it because if you don't, it's going to be hard to remove some of that gel stain if you think you've done too much. So I'm just going around with the baby wipe and kind of wiping it off. And then I end up going and just kind of brushing a little bit all over it. And at first it looked a little bit like chocolate milk and I wasn't sure if I liked it. So I kind of started dabbing at it with a baby wipe, and then it kind of looked like it was marbleized. So I really liked it at the end. But would you have done that, or would you have just stopped with the antique? Or if you used it at your house, would you use a different color? Now here's an outlet switch plate. And what's really neat is on this one, um, I am going to be using, remember, I like bling, so it's my gold gilding wax. And I go ahead and I paint those little teeny pieces, and then there's a braid around the edge. So I go ahead and paint that. And you're thinking, oh, good gracious, Myra, I have so many outlet covers in my house. Where would I use this one at? Well, in my bathroom, I actually have some higher up on the wall near the mirror because that's where I plug in my hair dryer. And so if you've got something like that that's up higher, or maybe you have one in your kitchen on your backsplash, that would be a place that you could do one of these on. If you tried to do it on every little outlet plate that you've got in your house, that's a lot. So you could just do these for those special pieces that you know that um, when someone comes to your home, you'll, they'll see it 
Um, but I will not do that to all the outlets um, plates that I have at my home because that would take me forever. But I, I go ahead and brush on the gold gilding wax. And then, I, because I like bling, I go ahead and I put a little bit more on all over it. But I buff it off and it looks really good. Now, this is also on the cameo mold and it's some little earrings. So I'm going to show you how you punch a hole in it. This is one of those big crocodiles, and it will actually punch through wood. And then I've already got them dried. I'm not going to go through the whole process, but I wanted to show you that um, if you're going to punch a hole in it, um, you want to go ahead and do it while it's after, right after it's done, or it's going to be just too hard to punch a hole through it. And then from there, um, I attempt to make it into some pretty earrings, and I paint them gold. Um, I am not a jewelry maker, so if you're a jewelry maker, um, please forgive me for not doing the best job as far as making them into earrings. But are you a jewelry maker? I have a friend who makes jewelry, and she sells it a lot. Okay, so the next project is just a little hang tag. And it is made with the lock and key mold. And this one I used um, seagrass green. And then um, I put some Voodoo Gel Stain on it to antique it. And I'm going to go ahead. Well, these are just freshly uh, molded. I'll go ahead and I'll punch a hole in it. Now, when you use that crocodile, it's kind of hard to see. So I go back on the back and I make like a little dot so that I can see where I want it to be. And then I try to punch it because otherwise, sometimes I've punched it kind of off to the side so I learned that it's just easier to go ahead and make that mark on it before I try to punch it. And then you can put a, a little lock on it along with a key and hang those together. And it makes for a really neat hang tag. And you can hang it off of anything. You can hang it off of a um, little switch on a light, a light that you have on a table, or you can just hang it from a little cabinet knob. They're just pretty wherever you want to hang them. Now my next project is just a little coaster um, and I found a little round mold off of Amazon and I painted it the um, seagrass green. I think that's the color. I'm sorry. It's the sea glass green, not seagrass. And this is just part of a napkin that I have decoupaged onto it. And I've already used my water pen to separate that piece but um, I still kind of tear it just a little bit. And then I use some heavy duty Mod Podge on it to make it more waterproof. And I'm gonna make a set of them um, once I get some more resin, cause I've run out of resin. But you're gonna wanna use a lot of decoupage on this. And then what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll put some little felt pieces on the back of it so it won't slide around on the table. And this one is um, a picture or a little piece of a napkin that's got a butterfly on it. And I think the butterfly is a little purple. It's really pretty. And so I go ahead and just lightly put on the, um, the Mod Podge, just because remember, if you're using a napkin, they're so, so easy to tear and you wanna be super careful. Or if you don't, you just kind of pick it up with that paintbrush and start all over again. And so this, I will also put decoupage, I'm sorry, Mod Podge on the back of it to protect that. And that's just a little coaster. Now the next tag, oh gosh, look at this, isn't this beautiful? So it's white, I've painted it white, and this is a transfer. And I can't remember who made it, but I found it on Amazon, and it's that China Blue. Um, and I've used part of it on the front, and I actually put another part on the back, but then I decided to um, change that up. And I put a dolly on the back of it. I went on and glued it on because I'm keeping this one. And I trimmed off around the edges of the dolly. And you'll see that I need enough of that dolly on the bottom to where I can use all different kind of laces and little um, pearl strings that you can get at Hobby Lobby. And I just use that as the fringe on the hang tag. Because you can see on the dolly, it's got that little hole on it. And even though I've already put a transfer on the back, I changed my mind. And so there's a little hole, and that's what I push the lace through to have that fringe on the back. And then I use um, a piece of lace, and I tie a little bow, and then I glue it on the 
end right before the tassel, and then I use a piece of lace um, to hang it with because this mold actually came um, from Amazon and it had a place on it to where when I when it came out of the mold it already had the hole in the top which was wonderful and I like that so I'm just going to go ahead and use a little bit of hot glue and glue that to it and I just think it makes the prettiest hang tag and this one is staying at my house because I just love it um, but I'm afraid my mom might steal it because her favorite colors are navy and yellow so I may just have to make her one so I can keep this one. But the dolly is on the back. So you can do it however you want to, um, but I thought that having it on the dolly would make it easier instead of trying to glue all those little pieces of lace to the back. And then that piece of lace, I think it was probably something that somebody might have used to make a veil. Now the next project are just some little key rings. I, found um, that mold on Amazon and it came with a hole in it and it came with the key rings and I just made some pretty little key rings with it. You can use different transfers. And the next one is from that Cameo mold and it's just a little heart and I did have to punch a hole in that one. And I'm painting the front and back ballet slipper pink from Waverly. And then I'm gonna use a little piece of a napkin and I'm gonna decoupage on the top part of that um, heart and it's just a little flower and the napkin was actually blue but um it was a blue napkin that had little pink flowers on it so even though i used my water pen to separate the flower off of it to be able to fit on there i still kind of had to pick at it a little bit to get it just where i want it and then i decoupaged it on isn't that pretty i like that a lot now the next piece is just a cookie sheet that I got at Dollar Tree and I painted it with slick stick and then painted it white. It's important to use that slick stick by Dixie Belle so the paint won't move on it. And then I used a transfer that's by Redesign with Prima and it's called, and it's called Overflowing Love and it's by Redesign with Prima that you can find on Amazon and I just took bits and pieces of it and I used some French script on it up at the top and on the bottom. And then um, I pulled out some of the little pink flowers. And then at the end, I pulled some little green stems. And then I actually um, painted on the edge of the cookie sheet, but I didn't um, paint the top of the cookie sheet. But because it was easy for it to... Um, I could have used blue painter's tape to tape it off, but... I didn't want to, um, and so I went on and wiped it off very quickly with um, a baby wipe because I will tell you, I like slick stick a lot, but it's hard to come off. It, it dries pretty quick, and then it's hard to come off, and then I'm just um, using like a little stick to um, put that transfer on, and then you just kind of burnish it, so I put a little bit up at the top and then a little bit at the bottom, and then... I made some little magnets to kind of go along with it. And this was actually some magnets that I made with resin, but the mold came from Walmart in the cake decorating section. And it was one of those little molds that you would use to make things like um, Reese cups. But remember, if you once you use resin in a mold, it could, it's not food safe after that at all. So if um, you were gonna use it for making like chocolate molds, you would never want to put resin in it. Um, I just am not comfortable using chemicals and then putting, you know, using it for food later on. And so I just kind of play around with the transfers and put a little bit here and put a little bit there. But I don't go overboard on this because I'm going to be using the magnets. So if you were going to have this little cookie sheet tray that had magnets on it, would you use it to put pictures of your grandchildren? Or would you use it for like calendar reminders? Or would you put like maybe a recipe on it that, or like your grocery list on it? What would you use a little magnet board for? I think I probably would use it to put little pictures of my grandkids on it. And I just do a little bit here and a little bit there. And the magnets are, um, the little floral ones are, I painted them pink and then I used a, decoupaged a napkin on it that had little pink flowers on it and then the ones that are just plain pink 
um, I stamp those with the IOD mold. I'm sorry, an IOD stamp, and it's called knob toppers, and it's just the smaller ones that they make in that. It is a, sort of an older stamp, and it's really neat if you're going to be um, painting a lot of cabinet knobs, and it's a good way to put a design on a cabinet knob, but it's great for other things. They're just a lot of little round knob toppers that you can stamp on different things. So it just is not going to be used just for cabinet knobs, but you could be using it for a lot of different things if you want to use a little round stamp. So I've got it all painted, and I go ahead and put um, a little pink at the top and a little pink at the bottom, and then after I play with it a little bit, I put a little bit of um, green floral pieces on it, some little stems. So, so far, what's been your favorite project today? Have you ever used resin before? And after this, would you use resin? It's um, about $17.99 at Hobby Lobby, and but it goes a really long way. And I use it pretty sparingly, but I wanted to make a video today just about resin and about all the different ways that you can use it. Um, and all the molds with OD and Redesign with Prima are great for making molds. So those are the ones decoupaged. And now um, I use these to put the stamp on. And one of them, I think I stamped on it and I really didn't like the design at all. And so I went back and painted it and then I used a different kind of stamp. And I think I started it by putting it on like the little thin, thin mount, but then I changed my mind um, and I just kind of laid it straight on to that. And see how those look like little Reese cups? And so um, with the little mold that I got at Walmart, um, I did not fill them all the way up to the top. I made them a little bit thinner than I would if I was going to make regular Reese cups. And I think this may be the stamp that I decided not to use. I just didn't think it was crisp enough to be on the magnet, and I thought it just um, looked a little muddy on it. So I did go back and I painted over that one, and I picked out another one. So you don't always have to decoupage on something. You can stamp on it, but isn't that pretty? So here we go. Here's all of the projects today that we made. What's your favorite? I'm not sure which one is my favorite today, but I sure do love those light switch plates and the outlet covers. I just think they're so pretty. And we all love making hang tags. This is just a little bird that I, of course, had to put a little bit of bling on him, and I just put a little lock on his and tied it on a gold string. And this is another piece that I just poured resin and made it into a hang tag, and there's my beautiful hang tag that I just love with the China blue transfer on it. And look at that doily on that. Isn't that pretty? And there's my little gold earrings and my other little hang tag and my keychains. And there's my book. And there's my magnet cup or my magnet cookie sheet. Which one's your favorite today? It's pretty hard to choose, I'm going to tell you. I like all of them. And there's my faux, faux greenery, because y'all know I'm not good at keeping plants alive. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks again for all the sweet comments since I've been just a little under the weather with all this pollen. Have a great day.